just let people come in as they uh, as they join. Sure. Okay. So thanks everybody for joining us today as we continue our health and wellness series of webinars sponsored by Hans Berger Physio. Today we are all going to learn how to stay fit at home, and it is my pleasure to introduce Robin Hansberger. Robin is the head of operations and business development at Hansberger Physio. Hansberger Physio is a dedicated team of registered physiotherapists, massage therapists, athletic therapists, and osteopaths, with locations in Aurora, Markham, Stouffville, and Burlington. Education is one of their founding principles of their philosophy, and as the wellness sponsor for the Aurora Chamber of Commerce, their aim is to cultivate interesting educational experiences for clients, partners, and communities to help build a better you. I'll turn it over to you, Robin. Thanks, Sandra. That was great. Hi, everybody. No My name's Robin Hansberger. Um, I'm super okay. excited to be here with all of you today. Um, a few housekeeping items just for everybody. There is a chat in this um, webinar. Actually, I'm just going to hop in and mute the group right now, just so there's a, no feedback. Um, it's a little loud on my end, so I'm just going to mute everybody if that's okay. Perfect. And if you do want to ask a question, um, you can use the chat function or you can unmute yourself. There's no silly questions please feel free to ask away and I'll do my best to monitor the chat as I go through today's presentation. So we're all here to learn about how to stay fit at home. Um, I know we all didn't think the pandemic would last this long. I know some gyms um, and some workout facilities have started to open up in limited capacity. So all of that stuff is great. However, it might be difficult to get a spot or um, to book that regular visit. So my goal today is to equip you with some of those tools to off, offset some of those um, in the gym workouts or get started if, you're, if you haven't um, started before. So I will kind of skip over this because Sandra did such a great job um, at uh, explaining who we are and what we do. Um, so let's just dive right in um, so I can keep everything on schedule. Um, one thing that I really like to talk about is motion is life. We are all in constant motion or we all should be in constant motion. The moment we stay stationary or static is when problems start to happen. Um, another great term, movement is medicine. Whatever movement is for you, whether it's yoga, whether it's walking outside, whether it's weightlifting, um, you know, whatever that is, even if it's a gentle stretch, um, cooking dinner, you know what I mean? Movement is medicine, whatever that means for you. So keep that in mind as we go along. Um, again, we're really going to talk about staying active at home during this um, lovely pandemic that we have going on. So before we get started, um, pre-screening for physical activity for those of you who have not been active before or have had an injury or have had something that's taken you out of being physically active, um, it's really important uh, to get pre-screened by your doctor or your physician to ensure that you are safe um, to return to physical activity. Um, so screening identifies those who may need more evaluation um, before doing a fitness assessment or becoming more physically active. So for those of you who may have a heart condition or have had surgery um, or um, have gained a little bit of weight and, and need to sort of figure out where you're at, um, I certainly have over the pandemic. Um, I'm sure a lot of people out there have as well. So it's really important to get that clearance from your doctor if you're concerned about if you can get started um, or to sort of really increase that level of physical activity. So that, that's just a little bit of a caveat. I like to make sure that everything that I advise you to do or that we're talking about today is done in a safe manner. Um, so that's really why I wanted to address that from the start. So for those of you who aren't really familiar with the different components of exercise, um, exercise is a positive stressor for our body, um, which releases endorphins. It makes us feel happier. It gives us more energy um, and adequate exposure to exercise stimulates cell growth, promotes longevity, improves immunity, and increases our likelihood of survival and that long-term mentality. Um, so there is endurance exercise, there is strength exercises, we have balance type of exercise and then flexibility and mobility. I use those terms interchangeably, 
So if you hear me saying one or the other, um, please just keep that in mind that they really mean the same thing. So endurance. This is often referred to as aerobic exercise, um, where it increases your breathing and your heart rate for about 20 minutes or more. To improve the health of your heart, your lungs, and your circulatory system, endurance exercise is, is, is what's going to help with that. Um, it helps prevent many diseases that are common in older adults, such as diabetes, colon cancer, breast cancer, and heart disease. Um, you, we really want to pursue the optimal heart rate variability. So we really want to bring our heart rate up to a higher rate for a longer period of time. That's what we mean by endurance is that long, longer period of time um, where our heart rate is elevated. So when you stop a vigorous activity like running, our heart rate drops about 20 beats during the first minute. It might slow down or drop um, 15 or so seconds um, and, and uh, and then in the third minute, we're going to see it go back to normal as well. So we really want our heart rate to escalate and then sort of give ourselves time to recover at the end of this type of exercise. So within one to three minutes, we should get back down to our resting heart rate. Um, and I can talk a little bit more about the difference between a resting heart rate and um, an activity based heart rate, depending on what you're doing. Um, and it's really suggested to do about 150 minutes a week of endurance type exercises. So a brisk walk running, um, cardio based high intensity training is really what's going to um, give us that endurance type of uh, exercise. So exercises release endorphins, as I was talking about, um, and they interact with the receptors in your brain that reduce our perception of pain. So we're really going to feel a lot happier, um, have a lot more energy after endurance type exercises. So if examples, um, running, brisk walking, or for the wintertime, Nordic walking, snowshoeing, that kind of thing, dancing, swimming, biking, climbing stairs, hiking, anything we are going to do for about 20 minutes or more um, is really what's going to get us into that endurance category. Strength. So strength type of training, whether that's body weight strength training, or you're using resistance, um, bands, weights, that kind of thing, that's all considered strength training. Um, so what strength training aims to do is improve muscle strength to make daily activities easier and safer. Um, it really helps to improve bone density and resist osteoporosis. So the sooner we can start doing this regularly, the more impactful it's going to be. Um, it helps to improve posture because you have strength to hold you in the right place. It helps to improve brain function and cognitive ability. The goal here is probably two days per week, um, either starting with light weights or body weights and then progress to heavier weights if that's something that's desired. Um, We'll get a little bit into more about form over um, quantity um, a little bit later, uh, but form for strength exercises is one of the most critical elements of doing strength. I'd rather see someone do fewer exercises, but in the right form, than try to do 30 um, losing form because that can actually be worse for your body than, uh, than doing them correctly. So examples of strength training, um, body weight training, so push-ups, squats, lunges, and planks, that's all using our natural body weight, and there's no additional um, equipment that you need to buy. Um, lifting weights, um, dumbbells, barbells, that kind of thing. Resistance bands, so whether that's a circular band where you put around your legs and you use that as resistance, or um, pulled uh, like a one long string of a resistance band uh, that that works either way. And then I'm not sure if anybody is familiar, but there's a TRX system um, that can hang from somewhere in your garage, somewhere in your house over the top of a door that really allows you to do different types of exercises, whether it's pull-ups, um, push-ups, um, different sort of hanging moves for upper body, lower body, and things like that. So um, those are just some different ideas for, T, uh, for strength training. Now balance, this one is probably the most critical um, for anyone at any age. Um, balance is something we can all continue to work on, um, but balance really helps us to prevent falls. Um, it requires a lot of core stability and strength. Um, and that's why um, when we do strength and exercises, it's so important to focus on the core. Um, it improves your proprioception as well as your sports performance. So. When we think about an optimal activity lifestyle, we really want to focus on all of these different types of exercise as opposed to just one. Um, so examples of balance, 
Tai Chi because it's a very slow moving, um, methodical exercise. There's yoga, there's unilateral training, there's Pilates, all of that kind of stuff. Or if you want to incorporate it into your strength training, you can use things like, um, BOSU balls or things like that to really uh, add in some, um, balance component into your strength training. Flexibility or mobility. So this one is just like balance, something that everybody needs to do more of. We all talk about, oh, I feel so tight today. And oh, like I did a workout yesterday and I'm just feeling so tight. So for the most part, we do not stretch enough. Um, whether that is dynamic stretching or static stretching, dynamic stretching should be done at the start of a workout and static stretching more towards the end or following a heavy intensity workout. Um, so stretching can improve your flexibility and mobility. Again, it improves posture. And I'm saying that too, as I slump over. So I always need to work a little bit better on that. Um, it does reduce the compression to our joints, which is critical, um, improves our range of motion. So range of motion is let's say, for example, my shoulder, if I can only get up to here with my shoulder, I don't have full range of motion, but my shoulder should go all the way up to here. So if you're really tight, you will never have full range of motion. So that's something that I wanna kind of um, stress, but stretching should be strong, but never painful. We don't wanna feel excruciating pain. We wanna feel a gentle tug. So only go as far as you can. And that's why stretching and mobility is such an individual exercise. So don't compare yourself to the person next to you on that Zoom yoga call, um, seeing how far they are slouch, they are over or in a certain position, because it's all relative to you. Um, flexibility and mobility does help with recovery after strenuous exercises, but it's also a great stress relief combined with um, deep breathing exercises. Um, and that's something that we talk about meditation and mindfulness. So again, flexibility, we talked about static stretching, um, dynamic stretching is more fluid, um, and then there's yoga and things like that as well. So how to stay active at home, um, try and reduce long periods of time spent sitting. So whether that's for work, studying, watching TV, reading, or using social media, or playing games using screens, we really want to try to reduce long periods by taking short three to five minute breaks every 20 to 30 minutes. Um, so whether that's just standing up while you're on a conference call or on a call like this, um, sitting up, standing down, uh, sorry, standing up and sitting down, um, short walks, um, going up and down the stairs at home, you know what I mean? Simple things like that can really add a lot of variability to our day. Um, even if you don't have time for a workout necessarily, um, that's something we can all do a little bit more of. So the other thing here in, in staying active at home um, is be active with your family and your friends if possible. So connecting with others can help you and your family in the home and elsewhere spend time together being active. Um, I know certain families uh, dedicate time for walks together, um, or they do a Zoom workout together. And we're going to kind of talk about a few different ways to kind of make it fun for all ages. So it doesn't just have to be adults. Um, there's ways to include physical activity with your kids and make it fun um, and, and allow everybody to do something that they like to do, but all together as a family um, or friends. If you're if you're living at home by yourself or, or you, you're on your own, um, there's ways to connect with people virtually or outdoors um, with physical distancing um, in order to get some more of that social aspect of it as well. Um, social plus um, those endorphins really go a long way to boost the mood. Sandra and I were talking about that water cooler talk that we're all kind of miss um, a little bit there. Um, and then lastly, setting up a regular routine to be active every day if possible. So for me, I live by my calendar and I actually book in body breaks as well as my workouts, just like I would book meetings. Um, so by planning a physical activity or exercise break, either by yourself or joining an online class or by setting up some time to be active online with your friends or colleagues is a great way to stay accountable. Um, there's online classes through the YMCA. The link is right here. Participation also offers different YouTube workouts completely free. So I'll make sure I send these out to everybody. Um, and you guys can kind of take a look at what they offer. Um, 
but also work out at a time that's right for you. There's some people who love working out in the morning. There's some people who hate it. Um, there's some people who would prefer to take a break at lunch and work out instead of eating. Um, or some people prefer to do it before or after dinner if their kids are asleep, things like that. Um, so there's no right or wrong time to work out, um, but make sure that it's right for you and your schedule. And that's going to be something that you, you commit to. So there's a lot of different fitness apps out there. Um, there's a lot of great free ones. There's some that you have to pay for that are great as well. But if you're new to physical activity and you don't really know what you like yet, I would suggest trying some of these free ones first. Um, the nice one. So for running and walking, um, there's the Nike Run Club, there's Map My Run, there's Zombies Run, and there's the C25K 5K Trainer. Um, so they have different um, specialties based on what you're looking for. So if you have a teenager at home, um, they can try the zombies run. Um, if you're new to running or walking, the C25K Pro is fantastic. Um, and if you're a little bit more active and sort of tech savvy, the Nike Run Club app is fantastic. Um, and, it, and it links up to an Apple Watch or um, something of that nature if you have one as well. Um, the free yoga apps, YouTube has a ton of stuff, um, but these apps specifically is yoga for beginners, Lotus yoga, if you're sort of already a yogi, um, and then the user-friendly app is Simply Yoga, and I really like that one myself. Now, again, if you don't find what you're looking for in a specific app, keep in mind that there are thousands of free yoga videos on YouTube as well, um, and you can access those from home. So for fitness specifically, this is sort of the strength training and balance training. Um, there's the seven minute workout if you have nothing at home. Um, I know certain equipment is really hard to get and it's quite costly. So um, just because you want to get active doesn't mean you have to spend a lot of money. Um, Adidas training by Runtastic is great for at home. Fit on, Map My Fitness by Under Armour. Nike Training Club, similar to Nike Run Club. Um, GE Fit, uh, which is best for tracking your progress. Um, Daily Workouts Fitness Trainer is very user-friendly. And then there's the Swark LT, which is great for kids. Um, so they have some really great, they're, they're really great at engaging kids um, and, and making it the more applicable to different age groups. And I think that's really important as well. So home-based workouts, whatever you choose to do, whether you are following something online, um, you've made your own sort of workout. It's important to get creative and not do the same thing every day. Um, change up your workouts and keep yourself engaged. Um, try skipping if you haven't done that before. That's a super low cost piece of equipment, um, but it's super, super great for the body. Walking, running, hit or circuit workouts. Um, you can use stairs to add in an element of cardio, uh, yoga, Pilates, no weights, no problem. Like I said, free body weight workouts are some of my favorite, quite honestly. Me personally, um, I was a member of, or I am a member of a kickboxing studio um, and everything has turned virtual. They are allowing people back into the studio now, but for me, quite honestly, skipping that drive there and back to get a 45 minute workout in is a dream. Um, and that's a nice thing. Working out from home doesn't mean it's gonna take one or two hours. Um, I guess that's one of the, the cherries, I guess, of COVID, if you could call it that, is, everything will always have a virtual option moving forward. I really don't think that's going to go away. And for me, from a time perspective, that's amazing. Um, and it really allows me to be far more active, um, but in a far more convenient way, if you guys know what I mean by that. So here is a home-based workout routine that I'm really going to encourage you guys to try. Um, so really make sure that we do a full body warm-up. Um, Focus, focusing on starting from the, the toes all the way up to the head. We really want to make sure everything is dynamic. We're not holding something for too long. We're actually trying to increase our heart rate um, by continuously moving. Um, so 
what we can do to warm up is follow this sort of um, circuit here. So marching in place for one minute. So get that timer on and start with one minute marching in place and get those knees up as high as you can. The higher you bring your knees, the, the higher your uh, heart rate is going to, or the, the more quickly your heart rate is going to rise. Jumping jacks after that um, and mountain climbers. Um, so the individual who's sitting here on the blue um, mat is a mountain climber. Um, it's basically assuming a push-up position um, or a plank position and bringing those knees as far up to your chest as possible. Um, you can do these quickly um, for a higher intensity cardio, or you can go slower and focus on form. Um, it really depends on how strong you are with your core. Uh, we don't want our low back to sag because that will actually make it worse. Um, so if holding the plank is something that's gonna be more beneficial to you, all of these can be completely modified. Um, high knees is just kicking up that marching into place to just a little bit higher. And always make sure that your arms are pumping as well because that's gonna activate uh, your body. Um, and then side lunges are great um, and they really help. If you wanna mix in a forward and a side lunge and get a little crazy, that's great too. But really try to do this through twice and no breaks in between. So you're really warming up your body for a full 10 minutes before we get into um, our, our real workout, whatever that may be. So here is another great home exercise routine. So once you've done your warm up, this is more of a strength based warm up. Um, so complete three sets of 10 is really what we're looking for here. Um, so this, oops, sorry. Um, this home based exercise is starting with some squats. Um, so really, we want to make sure that our feet are shoulder distance apart. Um, we can either go up and down for sets of 10 or we can hold in an isolated position there. Um, this one here, um, we've got uh, down on all fours, the second um, exercise down on all fours. And what we're actually doing is this this focuses really nicely on balance as well as strength. Um, so just because one type of exercise it falls in one category doesn't mean it doesn't fall into the other. Um, so this one here, we are going to put the opposite arm and raise it with the opposite leg to create a long, consistent tabletop across the body. So for those of you who've done this before in yoga or Pilates, you can either do 10 on the same side or you can alternate sides. But we really wanna make sure that we do as much on one side as we do on the other because we don't want our body to become uneven. Now, the third exercise here is focusing on triceps, but it also has some core stabilization as well, which I really love. Um, so either grabbing a bench, a step, or a chair, um, we can focus on some of those tricep dips. So we wanna make sure we're not putting too much strain on the shoulder. If you've never done these before and you find you're really weak, you can start on a countertop um, and just make sure that whatever you're leaning on has enough strength to hold you up there. Um, glute bridges would be next. Um, these again can either be held isometrically or you can go up and down um, in that glute bridge there on the bottom left-hand side. Then we're looking at a plank. A plank can either be done on our forearms or up on our hands. And then here, the last one is um, some shoulder raises here. And that's gonna focus on back strength, core stability, um, and some flexibility there as well. So this can either be held or doing sets of 10. Um, do everything through once um, and then take a break do it again and then take a break. So try to do that three times. Or if you wanna do all three, ex all three sets of the first exercise and then move on to the second, that's fine too. It's whatever feels best for your body. Um, here's a great example of a cool down. So every workout we do, regardless of if it's a balance related workout, a strength, endurance, flexibility, you name it, we wanna have a warm up. The, act, the actual workout itself, and then a cool down. So a cool down should be about five to 10 minutes. Um, wide toe touch for about 30 seconds. Um, quad stretch is great. Hamstring stretch, which is leaning over um, on that chair. You can see over on the right-hand side. Um, figure four stretch is the one on the bottom and it really stretches out those glutes. I love that one. And then a side bench stretch as well. Um, repeat the circuit one or two times. Um, that's sort of a great, thought. If you want to do it a little bit longer, try it a third time. You know what I mean? The, the, the flexibility and the cool down will never hurt. Um, so that's one thing to keep in mind. 
So some at-home hacks for fitness. Um, your body is the best equipment for exercise, quite honestly. Um, you may have different equipment at home and that's great, um, but don't forget about things like dining chairs, countertops, staircases, and steps. Those can be great um, tools that we all have um, that we don't need to spend extra money on. Um, if you wanna add in some weights and you're not really sure that you wanna buy anything or you don't really know what weights to start with, use some cans of beans or cans of tomatoes. Um, a mason jar could be another option. Um, I personally really like laundry detergent bottles. Um, you can either fill that up with water to reach a desired weight. Um, and this can kind of be a substitute for dumbbells because it has a really nice handle on it. And you can do some of those nice rows, um, squats and things like that. If you do want to purchase some equipment to make things a little bit more challenging for yourself, you could look at resistance tubing with different tension, a stability ball, a foam roller, or a yoga mat. Um, if you don't have any of those at home, um, those might be some great ideas as well. Now let's really talk about form. Um, so we've kind of been through every different type of workout you could do, every different style um, and, and the impacts and the benefits of that. Um, but if we're not participating in these activities with the right form, we're only going to cause further injury. Um, so and the importance of form reduces the chances of injuries, plain and simple. It provides more effective results. You waste less energy. You improve those muscle imbalances and it promotes better breathing as well. So you can kind of see here when we look at a squat, um, the lady on the left hand side this is all kind of out of whack. Um, we really want to focus on form. Um, so if you can see on the right, uh, we may do less repetitions in the right form and you will get a lot more tired, but this is better than doing 30 incorrectly and potentially hurting yourself. Um, so that's one thing I want to um, stress the importance of. Now, for example, if you're working on something and your body can't get into that position, reach out to a physiotherapist, massage therapist, a personal trainer, whoever you trust and ask for a modification. Um, all exercises can be modified based on your medical history, a past injury or something like that. And if something isn't right for you, we can suggest another exercise that will be just as effective. So please keep that in mind. Our bodies are all different. Um, what our bodies need is all different. Um, so just because your friend can do something um, and you can't, that doesn't mean you're a lost cause. And we can really find many different modifications for all of those different things that you might need. So common poor forms, um, unable to make, uh, maintain a neutral spine. So for example, if our body is hunched over this way or too arched that way, hanging tummy, rounded shoulders, poor posture, Highly restricted hip mobility is one of the most common that we see. Um, your palms, if they won't supinate all the way and supination um, and pronation looks like this. Poor breathing pattern. So if we are breathing from our chest, we are never going to fully recover. Um, reducing that heart rate back down to a resting heart rate will take a lot longer and it will cause you to develop um, weaknesses in other parts of your body. If your knees are caving in, that might be a sign that you need some orthotics. Our feet need to have a stable foundation because that affects the whole kinetic chain all the way up to, up to the tip of the top of your head and also instability. So if someone is unstable doing an exercise, that's a precursor that we need to step back and do some more work on balance or modify the exercise slightly. So really keep that in mind. Um, form over function is always best. So I know we're kind of reaching the end of winter, quote unquote, but it is still pretty cold out there. Um, there's not as much snow um, as there was previously. So it's probably snowshoeing and cross country skiing are off the list, um, but there's still some places to go skating. Nordic pole walking is still great to do. Um, I don't think tobogganing is happening as much unless you're up at the cottage, there's tons of snow up there. Walking in the forest, uh, again, snow shoveling um, is something that is quite an intense workout on the body. Um, I'm sure we all know that. Um, but some key tips, if you are trying to get outside right now, um, dress for the weather and wear layers. Um, always inspect your equipment before using it. Uh, the worst thing we could possibly do is not inspect our equipment um, and it having an issue and then um, getting injured because of that. If you are not able to, or you haven't tried something on your own before, take a lesson. Um, it's a great way to connect with someone new um, and, and challenge yourself. The best thing about working out outdoors is vitamin D, um, positive health effects of fresh air, and quite honestly, better creative thinking. So 
when we talk about flexibility and mobility, and this is the last sort of portion of the presentation, um, mobility problems are movement dysfunctions. So they are probably the byproduct of inappropriate movement, or they could be the result of a poorly managed injury, physical stress, emotional stress, postural stress, or inefficient stabilization. Um, and we see a lot of that here at Hansberger Physio. So how do I know if I have a mobility issue? If you can't perform the following exercises, you may have poor mobility. And I encourage you to try these out. So this first one um, uh, here on the left is called a wall angel. So we really wanna make sure that all of those points, the hips, the, the spine all the way up, the shoulders, the elbows and the palms and the back of the head are all on the same wall and slide up and down as much as we can. If we cannot maintain contact with all of those points, we may have mobility issues. Um, to combat those mobility issues, we could be looking at further flexibility uh, programs. Um, you may need some physical therapy, uh, whether that's physio, athletic therapy, osteopathy, chiro, whatever you're most comfortable with, but there will be a restriction in your body that you may not be able to fix on your own through stretching. Um, and same with this exercise here on the right. If you are not able to maintain contact with your knees, your forehead and your arms while squatting, that's gonna show signs of limitation in your hips, um, in your ankles, in your knees and in your low back. So there's uh, those are two great ways to test out if you do have mobility issues. Um, and then through things like yoga, um, different stretching routines and potentially some therapy, um, these are all correctable. So just because you have poor mobility now doesn't mean you have to have that forever. Um, and why are we becoming so immobile? Like it's it's everywhere that we, in every single client, we talk about mobility. Um, and one of the biggest reasons is prolonged sitting, working from home and just being in that sort of static position. Like we said before, movement is medicine. If we're sitting or, or maintaining one specific position for too long, um, we will become more immobile. So that leads to poor posture, stiff joints, muscle tightness and weakness, compromised breathing, muscle imbalances, um, more stiff joints, more muscle tightness, tightness and vicious cycle. It becomes a vicious cycle going on and on. Um, and that just really promotes injuries and premature aging, which um, I know we all are trying to avoid. So the biggest thing for thoracic mobility is looking at something called the posture arch, which we believe as a core. Sorry, guys, can you see me again? You're frozen a little bit too, Robin. Oh, sorry about that. That's okay. Um, where did I lose you? <laughs> where was I? Where did you hear me finish off? Um, you were talking about um, the last slide was um, we don't want to age quickly. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. Let me, um, let me get this back up and running here. Um, hopefully you guys can see my screen shortly. I am going to play from the current slide. Can you see my screen? Yep. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So when we are really talking about mobility, um, thoracic mobility is a great place to start. And that's that upper back. And that leads to poor posture. Um, so if we could pick one thing to focus on with most of our clients, it would be posture related. Um, so the gentleman on the left hand side is laying over what we call the posture arch. And you can see the impact for me of laying on the posture arch for probably I think I was laying down on it for about two minutes. Um, so these things don't have to take a lot of time. Um, substitutes for the posture arch would be laying over a mobility or a, a foam roller or a rolled towel. Um, we really just wanna to try to open up um, that upper chest there. Um, so this is what the thoracic mobility tool would look like. So on the left, we have a posture arch. Um, we also see the substitutions of a foam roller um, as well as the towel. So putting our arms out into a T position really helps to open up the chest for those of us who are on our cell phones all day, computers, working from home, that kind of thing. So thoracic mobility is a big one if we can pick one to focus on. Um, and then here is sort of a brief mobility routine. I will sort of send this out to everybody after. Um, so I suggest going through the 22 exercises um, one set through for about 10 to 15 seconds, um, holding those. Make sure you do it on both sides if it is a one-sided um, 
exercise. And really, again, I want to emphasize breathing from the belly, not from the chest. Um, we really want to focus on belly and rib, rib cage breathing. So one way to do that is to place your hands on your rib cage. And as you breathe, feel the air filling your lungs and, and the body moving out that way, as opposed to the chest moving up and down here, if that makes sense. And if this doesn't make sense, please feel free to send me an email and I can chat with you further on that. So that's kind of it for me right now, folks. Um, I've taken up about 40 minutes of your time. Um, I wanted to open up the um, open up if anybody has some questions. And if not, um, you want to ask them privately. My email is here. Um, and I just want to thank you all for your time and attention today. I actually have a question, Robin. Go for it. So you mentioned a couple of things with regards to balance. So Tai Chi, yoga, Pilates, and I forget the fourth one. So if you're just a beginner, is one that you would suggest over the others? Yeah, uh, starting with yoga um, is a great one. You know what I mean? And yoga is varying. Um, I know for a lot of people, yoga feels boring, um, but there's ways to make it fun. You know what I mean? Um, really looking at a flow type yoga would be a great start because there's very, there's many varieties of yoga, um, but we really want to focus on that flow movement. Um, and when there's a constant flow and there's some movement involved, it, it forces you to use your core and it forces, forces you to focus on that balance. Um, so a vinyasa flow yoga is a great way to start. And you know what, you don't have to do like 30, 60 minutes. You can do five, 10 minutes to start with. Don't, don't take a crazy goal. Just start small and sort of yeah. notice that progress and, and how your body's moving. Okay. Or, you know what? Literally doing something like this. I don't know if you all can, all can see me um, with your, your knee up here, standing, like even just practicing um, one leg, hands on hips, lifting that one leg up. It's literally that easy while you're cooking in the kitchen. Um, other leg up. If you can kind of hold that and test yourself by keeping your eyes closed and open, that's even a great start. Um, that's a really great start. It doesn't even have to be sort of a dedicated exercise, but if you're on the phone or if you're cooking dinner or what, whatever, um, you can do some of that one leg unilateral sort of balance testing. Um, yeah. If you haven't done that before, make sure you have something to hold on to just in case. Um, I don't want anyone to kind of fall over if we, we do. Yeah. We haven't done that before, um, but that's a great one. That's one I do a lot um, on conference calls. I'll stand up and just kind of test my balance and things like that. So that's a great yeah. gut check to know where you're at. Great, thanks. Mm -hmm. Anyone else have any questions? Rob does. Hi, Rob. You can unmute yourself, Rob. There we go. Hey, Rob. Hi. I'm uh, I'm out doing maple syrup today. Awesome. So, um, at any rate, you you mentioned uh, a whole lot of different resources um, in your presentation. Um, how do I access those? Uh, those different websites. Absolutely. So I've recorded the presentation and I'll be sending uh, it to Sandra and she'll send it out to everybody who registered. But yeah. what I'll also do is I'll save this presentation as a PDF. So you can actually just click through the resources as well. So you don't have to write them down. How's that sound? Perfect. Perfect. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Anyone else? You've always... Oh, Sandy does. You can unmute yourself, Sandy. There you go. Just a curiosity question. Uh, the since the pandemic, three. what type of clients have you been seeing that is different than before the pandemic? What seem to be the issues or have they changed at all? You know what? It's a lot of low back pain, upper back pain, um, poor posture because of our workstations um, and because of poor ergonomics. Um, some of us are working from the couch. Some of us are working from the bedroom. Some of us are working from the kitchen table and we simply don't have access to the same tools as we did in the office. So poor posture, uh, low back pain. Um, we're also seeing a lot of new runners who have picked up these outdoor activities um, and have injured themselves because they didn't have 
proper strength or mobility in the past. So it's, it's kind of a mixture. It's people who are trying new sports and new activities, but also that sort of lingering low back pain. Um, we are seeing a lot of people who are dealing, dealing with really high levels of stress. So our massage therapists, um, we try to relate a lot of that body stress back to occupation and things like that. Um, so we do a lot of work there as well. Um, but we're, we're quite busy um, in terms of new patients, people who are open to physical therapy and things like that, who may have gone to doctors in the past, and they're really not able to get access to a lot of those resources. So even if you may not be the right candidate for physical therapy, massage therapy, anything like that, we can direct you on what you should be doing, where you should be going, um, because I find a lot of people are finding it very hard to get in touch with their general physicians. Um, so we are here as a resource. We're your body mechanics, as we like to call it. So anything related to something that doesn't feel right with the body, um, education is free. If you have a question, please call us. Um, we're also seeing a lot of concussion um, patients lately, uh, people getting outside, winter slips and falls, things like that. So it's very similar to what we were seeing before in terms of the types of injuries, but the causes are a lot different um, versus a year and a half ago. Cool. Thank you. Great. You're welcome. Well, thanks for having me, everybody. Um, again, if you have any personal questions or you want to follow up with me after, um, my contact information is right here. And um, we're in the process of determining the next topics and things like that. Um, so we hope to see you next month um, for our next wellness series. Oh, well, Scott has a question. Well, I don't have a question. I'm just going to give a shout oh. out to the Hansberger Plus team. Uh, oh. My wife and I are both uh, Users uh, sounds strange, but uh, <laughs> uh, endorsers is probably a better way. But Robin, as you know, uh, your team has been great for us and uh, we've learned a lot and we feel better. So thanks. I'm sorry great. I was late for the call today, but uh, thank you. Thanks, Scott. That's awesome. And, and as Scott mentioned, um, our job is to educate you on the cause of your injury. Um, we will never just treat the symptoms. Um, and often Scott can probably attest to this. We won't even treat the area that actually hurts you because if you have a sore shoulder, it's not because you have a bad shoulder. It's there's something else in the body that's causing that. Um, so that's a big component of what we do is the education um, and also teaching you how to take care of yourself from home. Um, we don't want you to come in here every week. Um, we want you to check in with us. Very similar that you would check in with your doctor once a year, twice a year. Uh, the body mechanics is really what we're all about. So it's education and it's helping you maintain that fitness level and that longevity from home. So appreciate your time. Thanks. Guys. Thanks. Thanks, Robin. You always provide such valuable information on these webinars. So we really appreciate it. And I'll be sure to send out Robin's presentation. Um, and thank you for including the pictures, Robin, for the exercises. I think that is great. Yeah, and I have yeah. to say, I always find myself sitting up straighter when I'm on these webinars with you. <laughs> you get a picture of me on your desk, maybe. <laughs> All right, guys, have a great day. Thank you again. Thank you, Robin. Bye.